y'all, 2023 is almost over. So how do you move your business from one year to the next? Well, the first thing you want to do is look at everything you've done in 2023. You can go on through to your workstation and kind of go through the last year and see what goals did you hit? Did you do something new? Is there something that you want to look back on, on your sales or maybe on recruiting that needs to be worked on? So what I do is I normally go through just my last year. I go from January all the way until December. I know we're still in December, but you can still look at where you're at with the last couple of days of the month left. You can look to see, did I recruit what I said I was going to do? What was my goal? Did I hit that every month? Did I exceed it in certain months? And then you look at your PRV on how are your sales? Did you Were you hitting your goals every month? Was there a month that was really hard? Was there a month that you just like, boom, out of the gate, you were just rocking and rolling? Now, what I do during the year, during the day, is I have a notebook. I'm very much of a paper and pen on certain things. So what I do is I go through every single day as I write down my PRV along with my team, along with the GWV. Now, if we have certain sales that go on or certain releases, I like to write those down. I also like to write down if there's certain holidays that are going on that weekend or something else. So when I look back day by day of how it went on, I can kind of tell like, oh, well, I had a jump of, X on the amount of sales I had that day, but we also had a flash sale and it only lasted for three hours or, oh, I had two parties that closed that day. And that's why it looked like I had $500 in sales on that day. So taking day by day or even month by month, you can kind of do a, an overlook, just kind of look back through your last month and see how was everything going? When you start seeing different spikes of Certain people always getting active on a certain day or maybe always hitting goals by a certain day of the month. You can start to look to see what you want to look for in the next year. Now, you could be starting Cincy brand new and you could be trying to figure out what do I even need to look at? Well, one suggestion that I wish I had had in the very beginning is starting to write down your PRV on a daily basis. Now that can look in so many different ways. You can put it on a calendar, a digital one, a paper one. Um, you can have it on your computer or on your phone and you could write it down every day. Now I always put the time down. Um, I, I do mine in two different ways. I do have a notebook. So I have a notebook that I write down of my PRV along with my team's PRV and then the GWV and the time. Because what happens at 9 a.m. may change by 10 or 11 a.m. Because our all of our PRV and all of our points update on a daily basis for the month. Now, if we're in incentive period and it's over from like September or August, I think it's no September to January 31st, then these, those don't update until overnight. So it just kind of depends on what numbers you're looking at. But if you are just looking at your numbers, they update every hour about on the hour. Sometimes it's a little bit sooner. Sometimes it's a little bit afterwards. Um, so you can tell what time it was updated on. Now, I also have a dry erase board that I do that is just kind of a highlight of how my team did for this last year. So I look to see what goals are they hitting? Did they tell me what their goal is? Did they get a new teamy? Did they promote? Maybe they got paid at title. Maybe they're coming up to a incentive of maybe it's their shooting star. Their sensational start level one, two, and three. And then the next big one is getting certified. So those are different things that I look at monthly up on my dry erase board. But on a daily basis, I write it down in a notebook. So choosing which way you want to calculate that is totally up to you and what feels comfortable for you. There's different things that you can try and there's different apps. Um, again, I just use my notebook and I use my dry erase board as well. Now, not, let me word this this way. PRV is not the only thing. You can also start tracking parties. So that would be something good to, par like, to start tracking. So you can have a page for just parties, parties that start on this day, and then you know how long they run for. Maybe you could even start adding in like every time there's an order, that way you can check back with that person. Um, and you can start 
calculating how many hosts do you have in a year, in a month, in a week? How many do you get started in one day? Then you can also look at is like, where did you take that host? Did you do a Facebook party? Did you do a text party? Was she just going to share around her catalog and some samples um, just with her friends locally and basically do your bag party? Or was it something that you started an online shopping link for them and they just shared it with their friends, which is kind of a text party, but it really was just, here's my link. So you want to start tracking these different things so that you can look at what's working, what needs to be worked on and tweaked or what just needs to be changed altogether, or maybe put off to the side on a bookshelf for later. So as we close out 2023, look to see how you did. Pat yourself on the back, because no matter if it was good or bad in what you saw, you at least continue to work your business. Now, 2024 is coming up very fast, and there's so many things that you can start to do. Do not get yourself overwhelmed or start taking on bigger tasks than you can handle. One way to do that is to get a planner or have a digital planner. You can have it online. You can have it in a notebook. I did go and get the Synthi planner. It is 2024. This is our 20th anniversary uh, planner. It's got everything that's Synthi related throughout the book. You can go through and you can track your annual, your annual trackers in here um, a lot, oops, along with goal setting brief statements, and then it breaks down. Every month, you have an option to set monthly goals. I'm trying to get it to focus, but it's not going to because it's white. You have a way to do monthly goals, weeks one, two, three, four, five. You can also do your top three team goals. So this is something that you could go through. Now, you could create something of your own. Maybe you don't have a team yet. Maybe that is part of your goals. Maybe that's part of your plan. Now, one thing about goals is that I've learned, actually one thing about goals I've learned this last year is it's not about the outcome, it's about the process, the action. So if you take that into what will your goals be for 2024, make sure that they're actions. Like I want to reach out to my customers at least once a month, or I wanna reach out to a new customer within two days of an order. I want to make sure that I'm asking for parties or I'm asking for or having like the recruiting slash partnering um, conversation at least once a week or twice a week or once a day. So when you start doing your goals for 2024, don't forget actions are better than outcomes because actions you can control. Outcomes are out of your control. So think about it. What were the things that you'd want to accomplish this next year? Maybe you are on your path and you're trying to hit annual sales. How far away are you? How many people do you need to reach to get X amount of sales? That could be something that you could look at through, through the last couple of years that you've been in. Now, if you've just started, it's really hard to look back of how your years have gone when you didn't even start until maybe today. So think about it. On your goals, what do you want to do? Now, yes. We have a monetary outcome that we, 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 that we want, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only way to get there. When you start looking at actions of like, I know I need to hit $500 in 14 days for a shooting star, how do I do that? Well, the object would be, how many people do you need to contact? Now, since you don't have like information or data to be able to say, I have to reach five people and I'll hit 500. I have to 10 people to hit 500. You don't know that. So in the beginning, that's why we tell you to contact everybody, let them know that you're a consultant. You're not necessarily asking for sales, you're informing them. You're letting them know that there's an option for you, for them to contact you for any of their sensei needs. So look at actions, not outcomes. It's all going to change as you get more experience and as you try different things to see where you fit. Your outcomes and your actions are going to change. For me in the beginning and how I was taught was just contact everybody constantly over and over and over. Just keep texting them, keep emailing them, keep Facebook messaging them, keep uh, messengering them or 
um, text, like everything. It was just keep doing that. As I learned in the last three and a half years, is it's more like the way for me to grow my relationship with my customers is to take a moment and pause and talk to each one of them. So that could be something that you could try planning out for the next year. You could say, I'm going to contact one of my customers every week and I'm going to try and see what, what do I, what do they need from me? Do they want me to suggest different products? Do they want me like to suggest different scents or maybe they're a huge Star Wars fan or maybe they're a huge um, a Warner Brothers fan. And so that way you can be like, oh, that's what I can, that's what I can connect with you with. Let me tell you um, when things are coming out. So again, there's so many different ways to start your 2024. So take action, make your goals an actionable plan, not outcome, and start figuring out where you want to take your business. Now you could be watching this and you may not want to do anything with your business. You may literally are, you may literally just be buying from yourself just to get money back. Maybe you're only doing fundraisers. So technically it's not about the money. It's just about giving back. Maybe you are only in this just to have the community, to have friends, to have people that you can have conversations with and talk about the Cincy products that you have, or maybe the new ones coming out, or maybe the ones you wish they'd bring back. So just think about how do you want to run your business? Now, don't get stuck into thinking that you have to run your business the way I do, or that you have to run your business like somebody else's that you watched. One amazing thing about Cincy is there's so many different ways that you can run your business. There's so many different uh, niches that you can find that will work for you. Maybe you are not an online person. You're a face-to-face person. Maybe you need to do more events. Maybe you need to have more conversations with people that you talk to while you're out and about. Now, on the other scale is that maybe you don't like talking to people face-to-face and being online and doing videos and having online parties and all that stuff is your jam. Whatever you decide to do with your business, make sure that you do it the best of your ability. If you don't know how to use a certain app or maybe a certain social platform, learn how to use it. Learn how to utilize the features that it has. Because once you learn how to build your business and build your confidence, your business is going to grow. It's going to have leaps and bounds. You're going to go up. You're going to go down. When technology changes and something happens, it's really hard when you can't connect a certain way. You know, if they shut everything down and you can't see people face to face, if the social platform shuts down, then you can't get online. So you want to always make sure that you have some kind of backup to your business. How are you going to reach your customers if you're not able to see them face to face or you're not able to reach them online? So there's just a couple of things to think about. And those are the things that I've had to deal with since I started my business. So figure out a plan. Make sure that you are flexible enough to change it if something doesn't work for you. If you come across something that maybe you're not quite ready for, but you want to implement it at some point in your business, then make sure you have a area, either a notes thing on your phone, um, some kind of reminder that you can set up on your calendar to check back in to see if that idea would work now, or make sure that you have like a sheet of paper that you have on your, like on your wall or on your computer, a sticky note of the different ideas of things you want to try and when you, and you want to work on, but it's not a diet right now. And then make sure you prioritize them. Guys, your number one thing on growing your business would be follow-ups. So when was the last time that you followed up with any of your customers? When was the last time you reached out to someone who bought from you? How long has it been since they bought from you? If you've been in this business for more than a month, there is someone that you can reach out to. Maybe that would be your first plan is figuring out a follow-up system. Maybe that is going to be your goal for 2024. Follow up with all your customers. Make sure that you set a small task that you repeat over and over and over, which becomes a system. So find your system for your follow-up. Maybe you want to work on getting parties. 
Well, the only way for you to get more parties is to practice on asking for more parties. And the only way to practice on asking for more parties is to ask for more parties. Ask if they want, like figure out a way that you love to work them. Maybe you love doing Facebook parties. Well, offer that. If you're one kind of like me that doesn't really like to do the Facebook parties, figure out another way. Maybe just offering them a shopping link. Maybe doing a text party or even a Facebook messenger group party. Something that's only gonna last for 30 minutes. They all get on. You're able to send pictures to every single person. They can respond to the image and say, you know, me, buy, sold, whatever. Um, and that way you can run that through for 30 minutes and then be done. Maybe you want to do a face-to-face. -face. Maybe it is time to get and dust out all of your Sensi products. Maybe the stuff that you don't use all the time. doesn't matter if you still have your kit or not. A warmer, a full-size warmer, a mini warmer, a pod product. doesn't have to be. It could be the mini fan. It could be a Sensi Go. It, it could be a wall fan. Get a pod, get a bar of wax, bring a cotton cleanup. You don't have to bring the whole pack, just bring one. And then make sure that you have your samples, your little testers, that they can go through and smell all the scents. Simple, easy, peasy, set it up. Have conversations, figure out games to have people interact. Start being more comfortable with talking about your business. The more information you have, it's easier to talk about. Have you noticed that the people that are great conversationalists know enough to carry on that conversation? So how much do you know about your Sensi products? How, like, do you use them? Because guys, if you've never driven a standard in a vehicle and you try to tell someone how you love driving a standard, but you didn't know what a clutch was and you've never had to, you know, do uh, like um, replace a clutch or maybe of uh, how to shift, downshift, or maybe even stop with a clutch. If you start talking about it and you're not quite sure, you're going to stumble through your words which I just did because it's been a long time since I've had to drive a stick. So for my, for, for anybody who has a standard, it's been a while. Most cars don't have them. Older cars do. So think about it. I know the information about driving a standard in a vehicle, but it's been a while. I know once I get back in there, I could do it. So just think about your products. If you haven't used something in a while, maybe it's your diffuser. Um, maybe it's an air purifier. Um, maybe it's something you've never used before, which the diffuser and the air purifier may be one of those. That would be something that you would go ahead and start creating different party links. That way, kind of like a catch-all, like it could name it for the month, January online orders. You could get that started and you can start accumulating rewards to be able to purchase the diffuser or an air purifier. You don't have to do them half price. You could wait for that party to be enough to pay for it, the whole thing. So think about those type of things. What do you want to accomplish in 2024? What would be your goals? Is it about a bigger paycheck? Maybe it's about growing a team. Maybe it's about educating or training your team for them to do better. Maybe it's just about learning what's going on. Maybe just like, Figuring out the business. I mean, I've been in for three and a half years and I know I don't know all the business. So the other thing is that, are you trying to hit different, um, different events <laughs> like world tour? Uh, we only have a couple more days to sign up for world tour, but those are all over the United States. So no matter wherever you're located at, there should be one close enough to you to drive to. Now, the big one that's coming up is going to be in July and that's going to be Cincy Family Reunion, which is SFR, and that's going to be in Florida. So maybe it's it's not about trying to figure out your business. Maybe it's going and getting yourself trained by other consultants who have been doing this and has excelled. That's the training that you get. When you go to these Cincy funded events, um, and this like they are all geared to people that have been successful at certain aspects of our business. Now, you're not going to have one person who is great at everything. You're going to have someone who's really good at fundraising. You're going to have someone that's really good at recruiting or really good at just getting high sales, either by partying, um, maybe by Sensi Club, or maybe just by doing events. 
It just kind of depends on what you want to do with your business. Now, I would suggest if you are new to Cincy that you try a couple different things. doesn't matter if it doesn't work the first time or the second time. Now, if you've done it about 100 times and still not seeming to get better, then you want to make sure that you are flexible enough to tweak, to tweak what's going on. Like make sure that you, maybe there's some adjustments that need to be made. Maybe you need to completely pivot and figure out a whole new direction to go into, but still using that same idea. Since he's just been an amazing journey for me, and I hope it's an amazing journey for you. If you have any questions or if you need to know what, what you should focus on, make sure you reach out to your upline. You're always welcome to send me a message. I'd be more than happy to try to help you in any way I can. Just make sure that you like, share, and follow me. I am Cassie Bollinger. I'm on Cassie Bollinger on Facebook, Instagram, and on I'm Cassie Bollinger on YouTube. So make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. And comment below if you have any questions or if you just need a little bit of help or push. If you are looking to maybe partner up and get some one-on-one training, let me know as well. You can look down in the description of this video to guide you into anywhere you need. I love you all. I hope you have a blessed day and I'll talk to you guys soon.